Friday. Hello, Facebook. How are you? Happy Friday. I am Amy Raup of amyraup.com, and I am so honored to be able to come to you every single week and talk to you about really, really important health, wellness, vitality, longevity, fertility, autoimmunity, issues, challenges, situations, things we can do to better ourselves, to better our lives. Um, as I say, you know, it's all about renewing hope and faith in your body so you can live your best life possible. Many of you see me as a women's health and fertility expert. It's kind of what I'm coined as. I've written a book called Yes, You Can Get Pregnant. It's a bestseller, so people see me as the woman that helps people get pregnant. But I've also written other books on just general health. I have one book called Chill Out and Get Healthy, and my most recent book is called Body Belief, which is on autoimmunity and <clears throat> learning to love your body more. And so I've been at this a long time. I've been in clinical practice for 16 years. I'm an acupuncturist and an herbalist, and then I've been writing books for a little over a decade now. And I, I get to reach women and men all over the world and help them optimize their health and their vitality. And a lot of times when you do that, that leads to improved fertility. So I do know a thing or two about fertility as well. But to understand what I always say is fertility is an extension of health. And health is mental, it's emotional, it's physical, it's nutritional. And this month is, or is it this week or this month is National Eating Disorder Awareness Week or Month. I'm, I'm not going to know that exact terminology because every... It just depends. So anyway, we are focusing on eating disorders because, you know, not to... Uh, brush over them at all. They are super important and I can't tell you how many women I see in the clinic or in my online coaching that have been impacted by an eating disorder. And, you know, it's a very uh, special place to me, if you will, and special I think is uh, the right word. Yes, eating disorder week. Thank you. Um, it's special to me because I myself had a pretty significant eating disorder when I was in college. And Gosh, you know, it ruled my life. And my mother had an eating disorder when I was a young, young-ish child. I guess I was probably, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there. My mom was actually um, teaching aerobics for Jackie Sorensen, which is really funny. It was like a cultish aerobic cult <laughs> that you like trained for, and you had to try out, and you had, you know, all these. Um, choreographies that you had to go and teach, but she also had our instructors weigh in. So my mother, if she wasn't the right weight to teach the class, which was a very thin weight for my mother, she couldn't teach, so then she couldn't make money that week. So it, it developed into an interesting habit with her weight that, um, you know, I don't know that that impacted me later in life. Uh, maybe some therapists would say that, but I just remember those dinner times of dinner where like we were all eating like a full meal and she was eating like a plate of asparagus. And I, I remember thinking like, well, that's interesting. Why is she only eating asparagus? You know, and I'm eating a pork chop with applesauce and corn on the cob and butter and, and asparagus. Um, so I had this association, you know, and I also grew up, my mom owned a gym. And so after she taught for Jackie Sorensen and then she got, I think she got her eating disorder under control and started to understand how to nourish and support her body in the best way. She opened a gym. So it was around fitness and exercise a lot. And I was always, I was a gymnast. I was always super fit and super tiny. I didn't break a hundred pounds or develop breasts or get my period until I was like 16 years old. Um, because I was always really just a tiny person. And so when I went away to college, um, you know, I did, I gained that like freshman 15 or whatever that was. And, um, just, you know, I grew up in a really healthy household, you know, even healthy from my perspective of like, we ate super clean foods, we, we mainly cooked our foods, um, not a lot of sugar or packaged processed foods, it's just how my mother always was. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, when I went to college, I think I just kind of deviated to this more standard American diet and my body just mm -mm, did not like it. it. I was like almost like a hundred and, you know, whatever. I was like 20 or 30 pounds heavier than I should have been at one point. And um, I, you know, had a group of girlfriends that we all became very weight conscious. 
I think I was also really insecure. One of my best friends had just died, which was really sad. And all of us had to go away to college, all of our close high school group. And we lost this best friend and it was very sad. And we all had to go our separate ways to college and had to make new friends. And I was at a really big university. How was I going to do at school? All of these things came up for me. And um, I, I was definitely deeply insecure and weight became how I managed my security. So the skinnier I was, the prettier I felt, the more people I felt liked me. And so it became this thing. And I had two girlfriends of mine that, you know, we all lived together. Um, we were close friends and we all kind of went through it together. We were all in this eating disorder thing together. I, you know, I got really skinny and I did a, a, a mixture of bulimia and anorexia. So sometimes I would binge and purge. Sometimes I would just starve myself. I was always counting calories. I would basically eat like a baked potato and a Diet Coke uh, from the student cafeteria. And, and then I would go and work out and I would actually calculate how much I could um, drink that night based on calories of like beer. Um, it was, a, it was a, a, a supreme obsession. I was so skinny, I lost my period. Um, <clears throat> you know, I was, I was just, I was tinier than I ever needed to be. My body, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a more, you know, I, I have naturally bigger breasts. I'm just kind of a, more of a voluptuous girl. Um, and I was, you know, almost 100 pounds, and it was just way too skinny for me, I think, you know. I'm more, I'm more healthier at the 120, 25 range. And so my BMI was super low. My body fat was super low. I, I stopped menstruating. I mean, it was, it was a significant issue. And, um, you know, my parents were doing their best to be supportive and help me figure it out. Um, of course, they were really concerned that I might wind up hospitalized. You know, I was like losing my hair. My nails were all thinning and chipped. And, you know, there was, it was bad. It was not good at all. And, um, you know, if you guys can relate, I'd love to hear about, you know, if, if, yeah, if you can relate, were you ever in that position? And it just ruled my life. I mean, food and exercise and calorie counting completely ruled my life. Um, how that pair of jeans fit completely ruled my life. I, you know, at, at this stage, I'm, I'm, I think 20 years clean for my eating disorder, I still don't own a scale. I still use my clothes as a means to tell me kind of where, where I'm going and how, how my body is, but I really use my fitness and, I, and more importantly, I use how I feel as my mode of operandi, you know, but, but back then it was the number on the scale dictated my joy each day. How those jeans fit dictated my joy each day. How many calories I burned dictated my joy each day. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a real sick time in my life. And, and that lasted, you know, I think it all kind of kicked in probably by like second year of college and, you know, into, then I went from college to graduate school, um, maybe kind of circled back and forth. I was more just bulimic at that point where I would just have these binge purge episodes and that was, you know, probably 22, 23, 24. So I was in it for a good, I'd say, five years, uh, maybe four to five years that I had a pretty significant eating disorder. The, the worst of it was really that junior year in college where I lost my period. And then I, I started to get things back, you know, and I started to kind of understand, like, I needed a little more fat in my diet. I was completely fat-free. I remember one of our friends in college, we were at the um, student hall eating lunch, and I was eating... At the time, my lunch of choice was the fat-free frozen yogurt. I mean, you guys know me as like the, the deep nutrition queen, like eat fat, eat animal protein. Eat. I was a vegetarian. Um, I basically ruled out every food group just so I could avoid eating. So I didn't eat meat. I didn't eat cheese. I didn't eat, like I didn't eat anything that could potentially cause me to gain weight. Everything was fat-free, processed, and I was eating fat-free frozen yogurt. So we're sitting at the, at the cafeteria. I'm eating this fat-free frozen yogurt, and this guy Joe says to me, Amy, when they said the word fat-free, it wasn't literal. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, at first I was, I took it as a compliment. I was like, oh, I'm really skinny. But, I mean, I look back at pictures, and, like, you could see my ribs in swimsuits. I mean, it was, um, it was really, really a, a tough time. And 
I'm sure you guys can relate because I can't tell you how often I hear about these stories. I'm going to try to look at Instagram. No one's saying anything, but feel free to share. I mean, if you don't want to, it's okay too, but behind closed doors in the clinic, I'd say 50 to 60% of women I see have had an eating disorder or currently still have one. Um, very few women have a really healthy relationship with food because food becomes the coping mechanism. It's the one thing we can control. And that's what I realized. Like when I look back, that was the biggest thing that was going on for me was I felt really out of control in my life. Academically, I wasn't doing nearly as well as I was in high school. Um, romantically, I wasn't doing as well. Socially, I wasn't doing as well. I felt like you know, a fish out of water in college, and it was a scary time. I was very comfortable in my high school experience and my friends and my boyfriend then, and it was all a really comfortable time for me, and then going off to college was a, a, a big disruption. There was a lot of disruptions in my life, and so food became this thing that I would control, and weight became this thing that I would control, and then based on that experience, it ruled my life, and, you know, it required me to do a lot of inner work, but that was that's years down the road, you know, before I really got to that. Um, I went off to graduate school. I moved to California with my then boyfriend, and I was in graduate school for neuroscience out at UCSD and planning to go to medical school there, and <clears throat> was probably the most unhealthy I've ever been in my life. I was drinking a ton. I would smoke cigarettes when I drank. I was binging and purging. I, you know, I was I was healthy because I was running every day, but I was still eating all fat free, and you know, um, it just wasn't. And my eczema was at its absolute worst. I had eczema all over my face and my eyes. Uh, my periods were really, they were irregular and painful. Um, <clears throat> digestion was a mess, uh, you know, everything. I had a lot of anxiety. I would have like panic attacks on a regular basis. My asthma was really bad. Um, and you know, here I was get, heading to medical school, which is really interesting. I was working at one of the best medical institutions in the country and I had the worst health and I had the worst relationship with food. And that was not even a topic of conversation. I mean, you didn't even take nutrition classes, you know, uh, fascinating. And so Again, I think my mother was really committed to trying to help me overcome this because she herself had gone through it. And so she was always trying to find me like the right practitioner to work with. And she got me to, I guess, like a naturopath. And um, I remember she did like a, you know, a stool test on me and some blood tests. And I came back with, you know, all these um, deficiencies and issues. And, and she was the first woman I actually admitted to. I mean, my parents knew what was going on, but it, I would not have really admit it that I had an eating disorder, that I was still managing with this eating disorder. And, but because now it became vanity. Like now my eczema was preventing me from living my life. I was still skinny and that was great. You know, in my, in my, um, in that state of mind, I don't think skinny means healthy by any means, but, um, Back then I did, but now that my eczema was all over my face, it was this new level of, um, you know, my vanity was really at stake now, and I was willing to do anything to fix it, and so she was really trying to help me start to look at food as a way to nourish myself. It just didn't totally click, um, and then someone recommended acupuncture in Chinese medicine, um, my mother probably, and then other people. I was out in San Diego, so it was very popular back then out there. I mean, it's hugely popular now, but it was the most popular, I think, in the country was out in California. And so I went to the acupuncture school. Yeah, Holly, I've been there too. Um, oh, I'm just going to, I have to get a new thing here. I keep saying it. I just got to order it. Um, this is going to keep falling. Sorry, guys. Give me a second my Instagram thing. My tripod is just lost its life basically. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I went to the acupuncture school and I did a first appointment and all I cared about was I wanted to fix this eczema. Mind you, I was, I was depressed. I was anxious. I was in a relationship I really didn't want to be in. Um, I was at an institution I really didn't want to be at. I was busting my ass trying to get everybody's approval, dealing with an eating disorder, drinking too much, smoking cigarettes. Exer exercise and food were my two modes of um, managing my emotions, coping mechanisms. Uh, sorry, and alcohol. Did I say alcohol? <laughs> exercise, alcohol, and food. Those are my, and I think uh, many people can relate to that. Um, so I'm like 23, 24 at this point. And, um, you know, I'm like four or five years into this eating disorder. It's pretty significant. Everything is still about what I weigh, what I look like. 
And again, now the eczema is everywhere and I want to fix it because what I look like determines my, you know, how I function in the world. Unfortunately, this is what happened. Um, it became my, my means of confidence. And so I go to this acupuncturist at the school and I remember I had a balance bar that morning for breakfast. And if you guys remember balance bars, they were like glorified Snickers bars, but they were healthy, right? Um, <clears throat> so she says to me, what'd you eat today? She said, you're very blood deficient. She felt my pulses and looked at my tongue and like my hair was thinning. I was super dry. My eczema is everywhere. My period, I don't even know the last time it came. And when it did, it was like horrific. I had diarrhea, puking, like I was a mess. I was a mess. Um, and I said, oh, I ate a balance bar. And I was really, I talk about this story in my first book, Until I Get Healthy. I was really proud of myself because I didn't throw it up. So I was very proud that I, I felt like I took care of myself that morning. Like I didn't do the bad thing, which was vomiting my food. And so um, she said to me, she goes, that's not food. It's not food. I was like, it's a balance bar. Like it's, it's a healthy, like it's a, you know, a health food store balance bar. And she's like, it's not food. That's processed packaged food, like in Chinese medicine. This is my first exposure to Chinese medicine. In Chinese medicine, you know, um, the, the chi and the blood in our body comes from the food that we eat and how we nourish ourselves. And um, it was the first time, like, I think it actually, something, something gelled for me in that moment. And I was still a vegetarian at that point. And so she was like, are you open to eating meat? And what would happen is sometimes if I was drunk, I would actually crave a hamburger so bad that I would eat it. So I was very protein deficient and I was very blood deficient. And so when my, when my senses were down, I would then eat this burger, right? And so I knew I was craving it. Or I would crave peanut butter. Like I would eat like a whole jar of peanut butter because I was so protein deficient. And peanut butter, oh my God, I'll talk about the molds and my poor skin. It was just a mess. I was on proactive too for the acne. I mean, I was, gosh, I've come a long way. Very proud of myself. Um, but I, I know you guys can relate. I know some of you might even be there right now. And some of you were there in the past. And like all we can do is really have forgiveness and love for ourselves. Like we've, we've gone through a lot. And in it, it didn't seem that bad. But now when I look back, it's like, oh my gosh, what I was doing to my poor body. I was young enough to handle it, but it was a challenge. And so anyway, she gave me a couple assignments. I want you to eat like eggs for breakfast. And I want you to consider eating, you know, some animal protein, like a burger once in a while. And I, I did, I took it to heart. And I, because I was, again, though, I was really motivated by the eczema all over my face. So there was a motivation, which I know for a lot of the women that come to me, the motivation is to get pregnant. And I know I can get them to pretty much do, do things like this for the means of the baby. But I think ultimately, or for the means of, of vanity or um, health, better lab numbers, whatever it is, autoimmunity, ultimately though, we should be doing it because we love and respect ourselves. It took me a long time to get to that place from where I'm talking about now when I was 24, but it was a starting point, right? It gave me, it gave me something to work towards. Um, and, you know, so, so I took it to heart and I started listening. And the next thing you know, I mean, I'm not gonna go through that whole story, but obviously you guys, well, maybe you don't know, but I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist and I've been practicing for 16 years. So 20 years ago, I'm 45 now. So at 25, I entered into acupuncture school. So within that year, Acupuncture had such an impact on my life and this approach to, to eating and to nutrition had such an impact on my life that I leave, I leave Western medicine um, research and UCSD and I go and I, I sign up for acupuncture school. And you know, it's a four year program. I did the program out in California. So it's a master's degree in traditional oriental medicine. And I study Chinese herbs, I study uh, herbology, acupuncture, lifestyle, all of these things. And the first year of the school is many of the programs, uh, many of the classes are based on psychology. And the premise is that in, we can't heal others until we heal ourselves. And it couldn't have been a better place for me to wind up. Like I get emotional even thinking about it because it was when I got to really unpack things and realize how much damage I was doing to my body and how little self love and self respect I had. And, where, and how it got lost because there wasn't any, you know, major things that happened to me that 
you know, I just kind of fell into this rhythm. This is how I live my life. And, and food controlled it and my weight really controlled it. And other people's acceptance and approval of me really impacted how I functioned in the world. And then alcohol and exercise were my biggest coping mechanisms. I wasn't, I wasn't in my power. I was not speaking my truth. And I sure as hell did not know how to nourish myself. And so that was really when it changed. I was 25 when I entered acupuncture school. And I would say, you know, by the time I was 27, I was clean of any, um, you know, I, the binges and the purges got less and less, basically from 25 to 27. And, and by the time I really hit like 28, 29, 30, I was really in my stride. Like I was healthier at 35 um, and even now at 45 than I was at 25 for certain. Um, people compliment me on my skin all the time. I haven't had an eczema outbreak. I mean, I occasionally get them now mainly with stress or if I deviate from my diet a little bit. But what happened was I started to learn that food was medicine, that food is nourishment, and that how I nourished myself was the most important thing. I started to respect food. I respected where it came from. I got educated about the right diets. And, and you know, I don't think there should even be a diet. There's just we should eat a little bit of everything and it should be in moderation and it should really come from um, natural sources as much as possible. So, you know, very little processed packaged foods, definitely good amounts of protein, vegetables and fat. And, you know, I started to just feel better. I started to look better. My digestion got better. I didn't need the proactive anymore. My eczema cleared up. I haven't had asthma issues in 20 years. I was a childhood asthmatic. I was hospitalized like almost every year for the first seven years of my life with severe asthma issues. I had eczema. I always had a steroid cream on me. I always carried an inhaler. I haven't done any of that in 20 years. The second I started respecting food and how it nourishes me shifted everything for me. And now, and you guys will notice too, people talk about like the fertility cleanse or the fertility diet. I try not to say that. I don't like the word cleanse because you're not dirty. I like to talk about we can purify, we can support our body, we can nourish. There's no good and there's no bad foods. I had to learn that. I had to learn that, okay, that food doesn't work for me. It doesn't make it bad for everybody else. I have opinions about foods with Roundup and pesticide loads, because I think that's bad for all of us all the time. But every other food in moderation should be able to be enjoyed once in a while. But we shouldn't be eating a lot of pa pa uh, processed packaged foods, right? So I just started to look at food as, how is that supporting me? How does that nourish me? How does that feel in my body when I eat it? One of my spiritual teachers, Abraham Hicks, she says, if you eat something and feel good about it, it's a lot better for you than if you eat something and feel bad about it. And that has been my motto for a long time. Probably the last, gosh, 10 years that has been my motto with food. And with alcohol, too. I drink to get higher on life. I don't drink to wallow or to manage emotions or to numb out. That is the worst thing to do. I don't use anything for that now, like even exercise. I do it because it feels good, because it keeps me fit, keeps me feeling strong. It's good for my mental, right? So there's this fine line of like, I do it because it feels good. I do it because it feels nourishing to me. And there are days when eating a slice of pizza might feel nourishing to me. I don't do that all the time because the repercussions don't work for me. I get constipated my, my skin will start to flare up, you know, so I get these immediate reactions. And so I'm able to form this, but it's a very loving, kind relationship. It is not this thing of like, you can't ever touch that because that's the worst possible thing in the world. It's more, how does that make you feel? And, you know, really studying Chinese medicine and the philosophies of Chinese medicine and the philosophies of the Chinese medicine diet or lifestyle shifted me so much because then there became calories. I don't count calories anymore. I don't even pay attention to them. I don't even, I don't even know what that means. I, the calorie does not define a food. Um, I pay attention to how I feel. And I look at foods of like different, I want to eat a rainbow every day. I want to eat various colors of foods every day. I want to eat good quality protein, good quality fat, foods that make me feel nourished and, and full on the inside. I'm just like held. I want to be held. And I, I really love and respect my body in a way that I didn't 20 years ago. I didn't even have a connection to my body. And I see that across the board with so many women, especially 
And, the, you know, so people always say to me, oh, you're the woman that helps women get pregnant. No, I'm the woman that helps you live in your body again so you can love and respect it. And then from that place, it's very easy to make dietary choices that feel good, that nourish you. It's simple, actually. It, was there maybe, maybe I could have used some therapy back then. I mean, I think I got the therapy because I was in these psychology classes learning and unlearning the behaviors and unlearning the, the belief systems that got me there. You know, so I was, I had the right support and I had really loving, supportive parents who were just there cheering me on. Like, you're going to figure this out, Aim. You can do this. You know, my mom was like, I've been there. I've figured it out. You can too. Um, you know, so I think it was the right time for me. And also I was getting fed up with it too. Like I was kind of starting to notice this pattern of like, oh, now you're going to go eat that bag of pretzels and the whole thing of cream cheese. That was like my favorite binge food, pretzels and cream cheese. So interesting. And then I would just throw it up. I mean, how sad is that? Um, and then go drink and then smoke a cigarette and then beat myself up the next day. So then I go run 10 miles. You know, it was a very vicious cycle and I started to get really sick of it too. And I saw it in my, oh, Elizabeth Gavin, you're sweet. I saw it in my performance too, you know, um, when I was in graduate school. Uh, when I was in at UCSD, I, I wasn't thriving the way I should have been. And I think because I was not feeding my brain, I was literally starved of nu nutrients. And you, it showed up in my skin. That couldn't, my red flag symptom, my eczema couldn't have been a greater blessing in my life. It, it totally changed the trajectory of my life. And it was when I started to understand that food is nourishment, food is fuel, food is my friend, food is like my love, you know, it, it holds me, it nourishes me, it keeps me healthy and strong and fit. And I try not to use words like good or bad. And I try not to tell people you need a cleanse because I don't think you're dirty. I don't think you're bad. Food is nourishment. Food is your friend. So you look at food now and you say, how is that going to support me? How am I going to feel after eating that? It's called consciousness, consciousness when you eat. And I have that more now than ever before. Um, and it, it took me 20 years, you know, I think it's been a long time coming, but I slowly peeled back those layers. And, and now, I mean, I'm night and day. Like, I don't think any of you expect to hear that I was, you know, uh, an eating disorder, heavy drinker in my 20s, but I was, I was. And um, the transformation has been radical. And I also think, though, that's how I can relate to you guys. I was there. I totally get it. I totally get it. I've been there. I didn't know how to manage my stress. I didn't, I didn't have a spiritual connection to anything. I didn't have really, um, and not for the, the, there's always been good people in my life, and I still have some of my childhood best friends, you know, and, and I'm still very close with so many people that have been so special to me for, for 45 years. Um, but I wasn't always my authentic self in those relationships, so I wasn't allowing myself to be raw and vulnerable where they wanted to come in and support me, and I was like this, you know, and so now I'm more open, and it's, it just gets better all the time, guys, so... You know, I don't think there's an easy, quick fix for an eating disorder, and I think it takes time, and I really think it, it's this shifting this relationship with your body, and with food and how you function in the world and working through that approval seeking behavior because that's basically what it was for me. I've learned finally that setting a goal to exercise is never something I'm going to stick to. I recently shifted to making a goal to move every single day that feels so much better, so much more natural. That's it. It's just like even this morning, you know, I'm a little tired. We flew in. We got in late last night from our trip. I'm congested. You guys can tell we were in the mountain skiing. I had a blast. Um, but the Colorado weather's a little dry for me. And anyway, this morning I, I did I felt tired and but I said to myself, You're gonna feel better though, even if you just get on your bike for twenty minutes. And that's all I did. Just twenty minutes. You know, same thing, Beth, because if I had said to myself, You have to go take a forty five minute spin class and then you're gonna do your, your resistance training, I would have blown the whole thing off. 20 minutes. That felt doable to me. And that was important. I prioritized myself. I, you know, I ran late for, I had two meetings before. I was 15 minutes late for both of them because I put Amy first. And you know what? I don't feel guilty about that anymore because shit still gets done. I am important. I'm very, very important. And how I treat myself, how I nourish myself is super important. I wish I knew that in my 20s, but I also... I don't know. I'm grateful for what I've gone through because it, it helps me relate to you guys and it helps me, I, I guess, understand and see what how far I've come. I'm very proud of myself. I think I'm healthier now than for certain I was 20 years ago. So 
you guys can do it too. But you know, there there is no easy fix. I do think it's about consciousness. I do think it's about slowing down and reconnecting to your body, to how you feel, to how you want to feel, to the conversation you're having in the privacy of your own mind. My my most recent book, Body Belief, really digs into this conversation. Let me just see. Are there any people on Instagram, Yogi Wellness? You guys are so sweet. Um, so yeah, anybody else have any tips or feedback on what they did to help themselves overcome, manage, deal with a, a poor relationship with food and with your body? And it's not to say too, I still have days, you know, especially now in my 40s after my child and then even after the miscarriage, my body is a little different and I don't always love it. You know, I look in the mirror sometimes and I'm like, what is that? Like, where the F did that come from? And, and then I can get in that thing of like, oh, I just want to lose five pounds, right? And I, so it's not to say I don't go there. That is normal. But then I, I stop and it's like, but do you feel healthy? Do you feel fit? Do you feel strong? Are your periods regular? Is your skin glowing? Do your nails grow strong? Do you have a healthy bowel movement every day? Do you feel rested most of the time, except for when you get home at 1230 from a, a, a delayed flight. Um, yeah, do my eyes shine? Like, look at those eyes. They're just like as white as can be. Um, I feel good. I have that glow. So then I'm not unhealthy. So if the scale, I don't even know what the scale says, but if the scale says something or when I look in the mirror and I don't necessarily like what I see, it's like, okay, so you can make choices. Like, so for me, the choice is too, same as Beth. Just move every day. Move every day. I don't need to change my food. I eat really well. I don't follow a specific diet, nor do I ever recommend, you know, um, it's like eat lots of vegetables, eat good healthy fats, eat good healthy protein, good quality food, free of pesticides. If you eat animal protein, which I do think you should, it should be grass fed, you know, and, and we just keep it simple. Have one cup of coffee a day. Make sure it's organic because organic coffee beans are crucial. If you're going to have alcohol, make it clean, vodka, tequila, top shelf, or, you know, I'm a huge fan of the clean crafted wine movement right now, Scout and Cellar. If you go to amyrap.com slash wine, drink your bone broth. Like, that's it. You can still really have an awesome, enjoyable life with a lot of health and longevity and still make babies in your 40s if you want to. But you, you live in this balanced way and you really respect your body and nourish it. And so you don't eat, if you, like uh, Deep Nutrition, I'm looking at the book right now, it's on my desk. I love that book by Katherine Shanahan. And she says, if you want to lose weight, just eat less. She doesn't tell you to don't fast or don't do this or don't, you know, just eat less. Move more, eat less. That's how you lose weight. Eat a good quality diet. Look at food as medicine, as nutrition, as a way to nourish and support ourselves. And also know that you can get through it. I got through it, you can too. And if you need help or support, um, I'm here for you. So yeah, if you guys want um, to check out, I have a, um, I totally forgot about, this I'm a little brain dead from my travels. I do have something for you guys if you want. If you are looking to work on your fertility or improve your egg quality from a nutrition perspective. Again, food is medicine. It's the primary thing I use with all of my clients. Um, head over to amyraup.com slash egg quality and you can check out my information on how to best optimize your egg quality using food as nutrition. Also though, my you know bone broth, amyraup.com slash bone broth, wine, amyraup.com slash wine. We should actually get my coffee on there too, Beth. We could talk about that, amyrock.com slash coffee. We should add a site for that too um, because I do think like then, then you can still feel like you're living your life, you know. Um, anyway, I love you guys. And if anybody's out there dealing with an eating disorder, you know, um, I'm here for you. My heart goes out for you. I believe in you. And really what it comes down to is you working on your relationship with yourself, being kinder to you, loving yourself more, um, being more compassionate, forgiving. Okay, I'm going to go. Have a great day. I love you guys.